What should you do if you get Zoom bombed? Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio here along with Elmo, Hey Hey, and Lego Space Guy. And over a year into this pandemic and making Zoom tutorials, unfortunately, despite improvements to Zoom security, some people still have to deal with Zoom bombing. In this video, we'll talk about how to prevent it and what to do if it happens to you. Now, first let's talk about prevention. When you schedule a meeting, there are a bunch of different security and other meeting management options. You can require a password for the meeting, but if you have someone who's going to maliciously post the meeting link somewhere online, like on Facebook, they're probably just gonna post the password anyway, so that doesn't really help you. The most helpful option you're going to have if you are teaching a class online through a school is this require authentication to join button. You can check that box, and then not only can you select to require that people are logged into Zoom, you can also make it so that they can only log in with their school account. So that is the absolute best way to prevent random people from outside of your school from joining a meeting. There are a couple other options here, for example, enabling the waiting room and disabling this, allowing participants to join any time. That'll prevent people from joining before you. But for example, somebody could just join the waiting room and put in a fake name so you think they're one of their students. So again, this require authentication to join button is the best option to prevent random people from bombing your Zoom meeting. So despite your best efforts, let's say somebody does get into your meeting and is being disruptive or showing vulgar or offensive images, what can you do to stop that and kick them out? The quickest thing you can do, your panic button, if you are getting Zoom bombed, is to go down here to security and click the suspend participant activities button. That will lock everything down. We'll go over that in a minute, but before that, we'll go over some of the more granular controls. So. For example, if somebody is just being disruptive on audio, or even if they're just accidentally talking and don't have themselves muted, you can just mute everyone without going for that nuclear option of locking down the entire meeting. So you can do that by clicking on participants. Down here, there is a mute all button, and then you can uncheck this allow participants to unmute themselves box. So if you uncheck that and click yes, that's gonna mute everybody. I already had them muted here because all of these computers are in the same room and I wanted to avoid feedback, but if you were in a regular class, that would mute everyone and prevent them from unmuting themselves. So if you have someone who is just being disruptive over the audio, that's an easy option without having to shut down the whole meeting. Now, let's say it becomes apparent that your meeting link and password have leaked online somewhere and a couple people have gotten in who shouldn't and you want to lock the meeting before more people get in, but you don't want to shut off video and audio for the regular people who are supposed to be there who are already there. That is what the lock meeting option will do. So go down here to security, select lock meeting. You have locked the meeting, no one else will join. So again, if one or two people slip in and you're worried there are gonna be more and you want to just remove them individually and carry on with your class, lock the meeting and you can then kick individual people out by right clicking them and selecting remove. So if it's just one or two people, you know who they are, you can easily identify that they're not supposed to be there. Again, just lock the meeting, kick them out, and then carry on with the rest of your class. Now, if we go back down to that security button, you'll see there are a bunch more granular controls here. So you can individually disable sharing screen, chat, letting participants rename or unmute themselves or start their video. But if things are starting to get out of control, maybe you have multiple people being disruptive in a meeting or one person who is being disruptive in multiple ways, then this can sort of like be like playing whack-a-mole. So you turn one thing off and then they just cause a problem somewhere else. So that is when you will want to go for your nuclear option, suspend participant activities. This is going to lock the meeting and then shut all of these things down. So click suspend participant activities. It gives you this pop-up warning notice. Everyone's video and audio will be turned off. Screen sharing will stop and the meeting will be locked. So hit suspend and you'll see that even turned my video off as the host. So it shut video off for everyone. Nobody else will be able to unmute or start their own video until I turn those features back on. The only thing that remained enabled here is chat for me as the host. So participants cannot send messages, but I could use this to send a message that says, you know, sorry, give me a minute dealing with a Zoom bobber. We will remove, re resume shortly or whatever it is. You can also unmute yourself and start your own video again if you want to address everybody. But again, the other participants cannot unmute or restart their own video until you go back in here to security and check allow participants to unmute themselves and start video. So one more question, let's take a look at how this affects co-hosts. So I have promoted Elmo to co-host here. I have suspended participants activities again. Let's just do that one more time just to make sure. 
Now I'm going to go over to Elmo's computer and see if he can unmute his video. So, yes, it looks like co-hosts do have the ability to unmute themselves just like the hosts do, but regular participants cannot. So there you go, an updated review of how to prevent Zoom bombing and how to deal with it if it happens. We are over a year into this pandemic, but even when the pandemic goes away, I don't think Zoom is going anywhere, so I will probably keep making these tutorials. As always, if you have a question or a suggestion for another tutorial, please go ahead and leave a comment below this video. Thank you.